Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. We're out here on the back nine at the Babes of Zaharias course here at the Industry Hills Golf Club. This place is a gem, but man, this course is tight down there. Very, very tight. Please be sure to click the like button down below if you like the video and I'd love for you to subscribe as well. You can come back here week after week for some more local golf. Stay tuned, here we go, out to the 10th hole. The 10th hole is rated as the most difficult hole on the entire back nine. So let's see what we're dealing with here to start it off. A long and uphill par four that's gonna be wrapping around those trees on the right hand side. It's a very narrow corridor as is the theme here on the entire babe course, especially if you saw the front nine there. Oh my gosh, there's some holes that just make you thread the needle off the tee and especially coming into the greens. Now here, once you get it around the corner of the trees, it will open up into the green, but anywhere right of the fairway or right of the green will drop down a severe slope about 20 feet down, and you definitely don't want to be down there. Now the cut was working for me today off the tee, just aim a little left and let it go. A little bleeder right down the middle, and here I'm facing a nice gap wedge into the flag. It's tucked just over the bunkers on the left-hand side of the green. Here I'm playing for the middle of the green, and I tug it just a little bit, which fortunately went right at the flag. So it finishes here just underneath it, and after making no birdies on the front, I'm looking to roll this one in, but you gotta get the putt there to get him to drop. Another comfy tap-in par to start the back nine, and here, number 11 is one of the strangest par fives you might ever see. But off the tee, it looks somewhat ordinary. More forested trees protecting both sides of the fairway, but there's no fairway bunkers to deal with off the tee. Just that little pinch down the right-hand side here. Now, coming into the green, there is a little bit of trouble to deal with, and it's very, very awkward. The bunker there on the right is gonna be your distance marker. You need to get it at least to that bunker so that you can figure out where this green is. You still don't see it here, and we're flying about 80 to 100 feet above the fairway. There it is, wrapped all the way around the left side of the gigantic hill flanking the green. And today, we're facing that back left hole location. Now, don't uh, trust the shot tracer here. This one went dead right. I am on the adjacent fairway to the right of the par five and hitting a nine iron here just to get it back up and over the trees and hopefully have some sort of an angle into this green and no way I'm gonna be hitting it close to this flag. You can see where I'm looking here up and over the trees. I selected my spot by walking all the way around the corner and coming all the way back. able to really catch that sand wedge perfectly off the fairway, send it up and over the trees, and smack into the middle of the green. Putting all the way back to this back left hole location, I'm just looking to cozy this one on down there. I mean, ultimately, I guess I could have probably made it, but, you know, another comfy tap-in par on this really, really awkward par 5. Now, a little bit more traditional of a hole here with number 12. The par 4 is heading straight down the hill, so 373 is going to be playing a lot shorter effectively, maybe down to about 330 to 340, I would say, from the back tees. Those ferry bunkers will only come into play if you're laying up, which I'm not going to be doing today. I'm going to be sending it all the way down there, trying to keep it left of the greenside bunker and have an angle into this pin. Now I just connected with this one, a little bleeder down there. It caught the slope and headed all the way on down next to the greenside bunker. Was able to slide the wedge under that one cleanly and get it up here to a makeable distance. I'm still looking for my first birdie of the day. These greens are super tricky. These pins are always tucked in the corners. And here we go, the first of three par threes here on the back nine is quite possibly the most beautiful hole on the entire golf course. This 13th hole is playing downhill and 182 yards to the center. Now, 
adjusted with the hill. This flag is playing 173, and this eight iron should go 175. But I caught that eight iron, I caught it perfectly, and it flew a very long way, all the way to the back of the green, and here I'm facing a long 45 to 50 feet. Let's cozy it on down. Able to tap in the four footer there for par, and on to the second of back-to-back -back par threes. This one's gonna be playing right back up the hill and measuring 193 to the center. We're facing a back hole location today and adjusted for the hill. This thing's gonna be playing 210 yards all the way up the hill. A smooth five iron here, but it's been a while since I had hit a long iron. I overcooked it just a little bit. It flew long left of the green here on the rough. Another fluffy lie had to just scoop it on down there to this back hole location. I mean, it rolled it out there to a, you know, makeable distance here at six feet and uh, just got to roll it in. Well, not every putt drops and it's just another bogey. On to the 15th, a very, very tight driving zone here. It's a tunnel right through the trees, uphill all the way to the green. This fairway sits down like a giant half pipe. Whether you hit it left or right, it's probably going to funnel right back down to the middle. Now, this green is severely elevated from the fairway, a good 10 yard adjustment up from the fairway. And the flag today is sitting right on that front edge, bringing the false front into play. This is a dangerous, dangerous hole. Now today, this shot was also playing back into a little bit of a breeze. So I hit my low driving shot, try to get it down through the wind and was able to hit it right down the middle, leave myself a comfortable pitching wedge up the hill was able to get this to go and climb all the way up there, but man, oh man, did it spin off the front edge with all of that spin right down here into the chipping range, but just trying to get this up and down for another par. That's comfy enough. Go on up and pick it up on to the next hole. The last par four of the day is parallel to the 12th, but plays a lot longer, wrapping all the way down and around the hill. 425 yards from the tips is gonna bring both of those fairway bunkers into play off the tee, and you really need to be precise with your tee shot once again. Coming into the green, this is one of the largest greens on the entire course, and we're facing pretty much a bullseye today, kinda of right smack in the middle. So let's see what we can do with this off the tee as we've been hitting most of the good drives today and I can come to rely on this driver sometimes and just hit it whatever way I like to do it. And then, you know, sometimes it just goes crooked again. Tried to turn this one over and I just blocked it straight out to the right underneath the trees and I had no shot. Had to just punch a six iron out here and try to get it all the way up as close as I could to the green. Left it ultimately about 20 to 30 yards short here and uh, just tried to have to get this one up and down as well. Had my buddy in there close and tight and I told myself to try to get it closer. That did not happen. Left this one out about 12 to 15 feet. Not a comfortable par putt, but ultimately it is makeable. But you saw that turn. This thing was really slippery coming off that slope off the bunker. And it's just a tap in bogey. On to the last par three of the day, the beautiful 17th. This tee box is right next to the 13th par three. It's a cool little amphitheater there with both par threes going off in different directions. This one over the water as well, 200 yards to the middle of the green. And we're facing a back left hole location today, but it is downhill. So all the things compensated, it's about 190 back to that flag.
Now just a smooth 7 iron for me, that's my perfect 190 club, and ultimately I left it just a touch underneath the hole, it hit the fringe here and just trickled out onto the edge of the green. 15 feet under the hole, can we finally make a birdie? No, no I, I can't, I, I, I don't know why, but sooner or later, I mean, well, I really, I got one hole left, so maybe. It is a par 5, and those are my bread and butter. 560 yards here off the tee. We're just going to have to deal with the bunkers down the right. A well-placed tee shot. It's slightly downhill. Will carry a lot off this tee. Firm Bermuda fairways around most of the uh, golf course here is really going to reward you if you can hit good tee shots down the fairway. Now coming into the green, it's another tight approach here as it kind of zigs and zags around these trees. A very big and open green ultimately is protected on all sides by bunkers. And uh, you got that cool funicular in the background. It would be nice if that thing was operable and you could ride the golf carts all the way up it just like you're at Six Flags. But ultimately, not everything can stay operable forever here. Alrighty, let's get this drive around the corner. Tried to really stay behind that one but just couldn't get it to turn over as much as I wanted. It splashed down in the bunker, but luckily the bunkers were pretty thin and it splashed right out, out the backside here. It's got an awkward, slopey lie here in between uh, this par five and the one on the other course parallel to it. I was able to get a shot up and over the trees for the layup here and leave myself a comfortable number with a sand wedge. Just a little chip into this green and left myself pin high here for another birdie putt. Come on, it's the last hole. It's 15 feet, and everybody's watching. Let's get one to drop. It's possible. It's actually possible. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining. Appreciate it. I finally made a putt. Click the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Later.